Michelle, if you'd like to, uh, well, we should wait for Alexis and Dr. Roach to actually come back. Yes, that would be, that would be good. And then, um, as I said, Ms. Bridges can't join us today. Um, Hala, I'm sending a text to, and Dr. Shabazz as well. All right. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's see here. I think we'll wait. Um, so if you can hear us, Alexis and Dr. Rhodes, um, we're just going to wait to get started until you are back. And I'm checking. Um, okay. And there's Alexis. Hi, Alexis. <laughs> nice to see you. Let's see. Here's a message from Hala. Okay, Hala uh, will be right here. So we'll keep an eye out for Hala. And why don't I, does it make sense, Jennifer, to call the meeting to order? And then we could just, um, hopefully when we start sound check, folks will be. Yeah, we just need four of you here to start to do that. Okay actually here <laughs> right <laughs> oh we got one <laughs> hey dr Rhodes. <laughs> it's like you got one and lost another at the same time i'm gonna have my camera off because i just still have a cough and sure how are you feeling alexis i'm here okay i just have my camera off but i'm here okay excellent all right <laughs> Um, feeling good, Alexis? <laughs> okay. I'm all right. I'm all right. Thank you. All right. Good. Hi, Hala. Nice to see you. Um, okay. I'm going to go ahead now and call the meeting to order. Um, I am calling the March 27th meeting of the African Heritage Reparation Assembly to order at 2.05 p.m. pursuant to chapter 20 of the acts of 2021. This meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. Um, it's my understanding that the governor approved um, an, an extension to remote meetings. Um, so Alexis, do you know about that because of with Amherst Media? Yeah. So when I, the date is escaping me, is it for a whole other year, right? It's until 2025, it, actually. Yeah, it's a March 2025, I think. Wow. I, wow. Was I like that. <laughs> <laughs> works for you, Dr. Rhodes. <laughs> it works, works for me. I just I won't be back in town until April. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, let's do a quick sound check, um, starting with you, Dr. Rhodes. I'm here, and I hope everyone can hear me. Yes. And Yvonne? I am here. Excellent. You can hear me munching, and I can hear you. <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, and Hala? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, no, we're here. Good. Uh, and Alexis? Hi, everybody. <laughs> All right, wonderful. Um, and Jennifer, we can hear, I think we can hear you, but let's just make sure one more time. Yep, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes. All right, great. So just a quick review of the agenda today. Um, we're going to start uh, with the big payback screening, the um, our, our big event happening later this week. And then we're going to dig right into the survey. Um, Dr. Rhodes and I have had the opportunity to meet with the Dunahue Institute and, and be in discussion with them a couple times since we last met. And we do have something to 
um, present to you today for feedback. So we'll get into that. And what are, are folks good until 315 at least or yeah? Okay. Yes. Great. Okay, great. Thank you, Hala. Um, all right, wonderful. So let me actually start so we can have a better sense of our timing for today with our first public comment period. Um, we'll open up for public comment now, and then as always, we'll have a second opportunity for public comment later. This will give me a better idea of how to, to manage things. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and call public comment and I will read our statement briefly. Um, if uh, during the public comment period, you'd like to make a public comment, uh, the chair will recognize members of the public when called on, please identify yourself by stating your name, pronouns, and address. Residents are welcome to express their views for up to three minutes and uh, we'll be listening very closely. Although we, we do not normally engage in dialogue, but we will be listening closely. So if you'd like to make a public comment, please go ahead and use the raise hand function now, and we will bring you into the room. And again, there will be a second opportunity for public comment later in the meeting. All right. So I am not seeing any hands, so we're going to move right into um, the reparations town hall and I am going to share my screen uh just a second here we go and um share with you some details just to go over so that we are all on the same page Alexis and I on Wednesday will be meeting uh, with folks from Amherst College at the powerhouse. Uh, we're going to make sure that everything is set up the way it needs to be so that Amherst Media can live stream and record the event. Um, and we'll also sort of just be doing a visual overview of the space and how we might want it to look for the event itself. So thank you, Alexis. Um, and <laughs> so we'll be doing that. Um, so what you see here is um, an itinerary, both of the event itself and then of uh, Robin. So Robin is coming in late on Wednesday evening. She'll be here the entire day on Thursday. And then on Friday, she'll be leaving. So it's really Thursday that we're talking about here. Um, and so starting with the event itinerary, because I think that's what's Right now, I just want to make sure we're all on the same page about that. Um, right now, the way that it looks is uh, we will arrive at the powerhouse as close to five as possible. I'll definitely be there at five, but um, folks should uh, feel free to come when they can as close to five as possible. And doors will be opening at 5.45 p.m., um, I do want to note that the parking can be tricky. I hope to send some information, but if you have somebody to carpool with, it might be helpful. Um, but I, I'm going to send some information to members about that. And so I will open the event as close to six as possible and do the sort of general housekeeping pieces um, and introduce AHRA members and then I will introduce Cyrus Wheaton, who is the president of the Amherst College Student Senate. Um, and he and the Senate are our partners for this event. Um, Cyrus did text me over the weekend and said that he met with the government, the student government at Smith College over the weekend. And they were really inspired by our event. And um, he asked if he could invite folks from the Smith Student Senate. So we have some folks joining us from there as well. And then Cyrus is going to make some remarks to sort of connect the work that we've been doing together. Um, and then he'll introduce Angie Tizzy Gassaway. Um, I had an excellent conversation with them over the weekend, or actually this was Friday now, I guess. Um, they uh, Michael Elliott has asked them to make remarks on his behalf, um, but they are also the um, 
dean of students. And so we had an excellent conversation and I'm really looking forward to, to them being with us. Um, so Angie will make those remarks at about, we hope around 610. And then um, from there, Dr. Shabazz, and this is all, this can all be flexible depending on what you all think of this. This is tentative. Um, Dr. Shabazz will introduce the film and our guest of honor, Robin Rue Simmons. Um, and then Robin has some rep remarks that, that she will make, and then we'll begin the screening. And that's the point at which we can't continue to live stream um, and record. So we'll have to pause that. We'll send people over as Hala had recommended last time. We'll have some sort of slide to let folks know that they can go over to PBS and watch it if they are watching from home. Um, and then after that, we'll have a discussion um, amongst the AHRA and Robin and Mike Jarek from Amherst College and the audience. So just uh, want to see if there are any questions about this. I will send this out to members um, after our meeting today. Yes, Alexis. So who does the panel include exactly and how, how many people? So the panel, um, it's not um, a, a super large panel. It will be more of a discussion amongst us as um, an assembly with Robin and with Mike Jarek, who is the uh, racial history fellow at Amherst College, as well as with a couple of the student senators. So it's sort of going to be um, just like a, a dis an opportunity for discussion and then questions um, to come from the audience. I imagine that many of them will be directed at Robin um, and she's prepared to answer and, and be in discussion essentially with the audience. Okay, because I just I just need to know how many mics to bring. Ooh, okay. <laughs> You're like, I was just asking a very specific question. <laughs> um, I'm gonna get back to you on that. I will do it. Yeah, okay. Help me understand. So each person should have a mic that's gonna be, or could like HRA members share a mic and how, how does that it's gonna be like a gooseneck like how the mics look like in town hall um mm -hmm. and i can have a wireless mic for the um the audience um it's pretty much mostly for um the stream mm -hmm. um so yeah uh yeah knowing how many to bring but I also like if I'm running the stream, I'm obviously not going to be able to be on the panel. So um, that's one less mic that we'll need. It, does that feel OK for you um, in terms of like, is there a way to um, is there anyone else who can run the stream? No. <laughs> OK, <laughs> well, thank you. Um, I hope if there's anything that we can do to support so that you can participate as a panelist at some point, if you know, let us know. Um, okay. Michelle, so, do you have an idea of how you're going to set up? Like, is it, are you going to do like a circle? Are you going to do, some, sorry, I have the hiccups too. Um, are you going to do <laughs> similar to um, the listening session we had before? That's on tape now. <laughs> I know. I hate when that happens. <laughs> Wasn't a burp, I mean, or a fart, excuse me. <laughs> and I think it's done now, right? Like I just I just needed that last one to come out in the middle of our meeting. Um, that's a great question. And that's what I'm hoping Alexis and I will be able to determine together when we are there on Wednesday um, to brainstorm what would be the best setup and make sure that it works in the space. And then, of course, um, we'll we'll I'll try to actually send something to the group in advance so that nobody's surprised. But if we are getting there a little bit early, it should be easy enough to just let folks know. And are we, do you need us there to help you set up? Yes. If you could, um, is is Pamela also coming in person, Jennifer? Do you know? I do not know. Okay, I'll check in. Um, but if you, I as said in the beginning of the meeting, if folks can arrive as close to five as possible, it would be great. 
I'm arriving earlier, so I, I mean, I, I can't see the earlier part of your itinerary, yes. but I don't, I don't know where you want me to show up, but I think I'll probably be there by 3.30, 4 o'clock. Awesome. Awesome. Well, that is great. I just got confirmation from Junior today at Hazel's that he can accommodate us for a, um, a small lunch with Robin. Um, so that is about 3.30. So you might just come directly there when you are when you get in into town. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, yes, Alexis. I'm so sorry. Excuse me for earlier. Um, <clears throat> so being that they're going to be goosenecks, um, rather than everybody having their own microphone that they can hold or one that like they can pass easily, um, it would be best if we could have tables, but I guess mm -hmm. we can work on like what the orientation of those tables would be. Okay. Excuse me. Um, we do have like two small kind of tables that can fold up and be moved around. Um, I unfortunately can't lift anything. Um, but yeah, so I don't know if like, I, I'm, I, I'm sure Amherst College has tables, um, but yeah, that, that would be the kind of only way that I can see the goosenecks working um, in, in a sort of smooth fashion. Okay, so maybe what we can do when we, when we meet with Madison on Wednesday, if we determine we need a couple of those tables, then when I bring you back, um, I can grab whatever we need and I'll take care of that and make sure we, we get that. But I think you're probably right, Alexis. I think they probably have what we need. We just have to um, see when we get there. Um, Jennifer, I see your hand. Yep, and uh, refreshments, drinks, waters. Is Amherst College providing that or? That's a really good question. And it was a question that's on my list to ask you all about. Um, Not straight cookies though, right? Because. Yeah, I think um, that <laughs> I was highly criticized last time. For that. <laughs> I just don't know how much we want to get into food. And I actually don't know exactly what the requirements are there. So I have to look into that a little bit. Um, I have a, I ha I'm plan to talk to Cyrus later today, so I'll figure that piece out, but definitely like water and, and that kind of thing. I want. would say at minimum water, right? Yeah, yeah definitely. Um, so let me, I'll, I'll get that question answered. Uh, okay. All right. So just looking at this earlier part of the day, um, I wanted to um, share this with you all so that if you can join for all or any of these pieces of the day, it would be wonderful. Um, I, I spoke with Ms. Bridges earlier and she will be giving Robin a tour of the Civil War tablets starting at around 1030 a.m., um, and then following that, we'll head over to the Ancestral Bridges exhibit at the college. And I'm hoping that Anika can also join us. It sounds like uh, the last time I talked to her that she does have some time to do that. So we'll do that. And then I was thinking, you know, Robin may, she's getting in very late on Wednesday. So she may want some time just to relax and just kind of rest or do whatever she might want to do. And then there will be an early lunch starting around 3.30 at Hazel's Kitchen. Um, and this will be for Robin and for assembly members. That's an early dinner, right? I know. That's what I meant to say. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> late lunch. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Right. Very late lunch. <laughs> um, thank you. <laughs> uh, and then we'll arrive at the powerhouse after that. Um, and then that's when the rest of the itinerary starts. Does anybody see any, how does this look to folks? Any good? Okay. All right, great. And Dr. Rhodes, I don't know if you can hear me right now, but if just, I'd love to know if you want to, if you think you're going to, well, I guess, so Alexis, this is a question for you, for people 
who, so where is the live stream available? Where are, cause we haven't really marketed that very clearly. I think at this point, is that a Facebook thing or is it through Amherst media? Is it a station or? Yes. Yeah, so, um, we were going to have it, um, available on, well, I, I haven't talked to our programmer yet, but either on channel 12 or 15, um, 15 is our education channel. Um, so that's why we're thinking potentially about doing that. Um, but it's definitely going to be available on YouTube, definitely going to be available on Facebook, both under um, the Amherst Media pages. Um, and I guess the other question that I wanted to check in about is being that it is going to be available that way are we taking comments or questions from those places as well which I could like monitor and I could like like have potentially like a microphone or something to be able to ask those questions but I didn't know if like if, if maybe that's a way that we're um, sort of opening the access to those questions. That's a really great question. Um, welcome, Dr. Shabazz. Can you hear us? Yes, I can. Thank you. Okay, great. We can hear you too. Um, so we're just reviewing the itinerary for Thursday. So you'll see, I just, I put it back on the screen so you could take a look at it. Um, I'll also be sending it out after our meeting today. Thank you. Um, so Alexis, that's a great question. Is it, so it's not too much to be able for you to be able to monitor the um, live feed streams and bring back questions because if that would be fantastic. Yeah, it's not too much. It's just like I can't be like behind the camera and in front of the camera, so I'll just be like a a faceless voice, I guess. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Pamela and I, if Pamela comes, can also help out with fielding the questions and that way Alexis you can just deal with the um live stream that that would be awesome and if if that's the case then um I, I don't know if you'd want to be like at the table in the panel um that way you have or whoever it is has their own gooseneck um whether that's Miss Young or what um but uh yeah that, I think that would be awesome Thank you, Jennifer. That's fantastic. So we'll we'll plan to, I mean, I think we would have planned, I would love for both um, Jennifer and Pamela to be part of that. But if, if you can um, help out with that, that would be great. All right. Um, Dr. Shabazz, do you have any, we can go over this too offline, but does anything strike you here um, that you have any questions or comments about in terms of this itinerary? Nope. Solid full day. All right. Great. So I'm going to stop here. Um, and by the way, anybody is welcomed on Wednesday. Um, Alexis, we're meeting at 1030, right? Over at is that what we decided? We said 12. 12. Okay, great. Thank you. <laughs> um, so yeah, if anybody is available at noon on Thursday and would like to provide, or on Wednesday and would like to provide input on the room setup, we will be, Alexis and I will be over at the powerhouse at that time. Um, great. So let's move on then from the event. Oh, one other thing is this is our final push. Um, so I, we have put it out to a lot of people. Um, I invite and encourage all members to share it on social media. If you feel comfortable doing that, get it out to folks via email or text or however else you might want to do that. Um, I know that Scott at the Gazette had a, an interview with Robin last week. He's putting, he's writing a story about the event um, today. I believe it will either be posted today or tomorrow. I'm planning on putting some flyers around town tomorrow morning, um, but it really, we have sent it out to a great number of people, but I think 
we want to remind people this week. I did want to ask you, Alexis, um, as with the listening session, were you able to put the flyer up on any of the Amherst media um, shows that have been happening? Um, we have to, because of the orientation, we have to like edit it a little bit. Um, but yeah, we are, we're definitely, um, advertising again. Okay. Perfect. Cause I, I don't know if you remember from the listening session, the one person that that was like <laughs> really touching. <laughs> um, I, I don't know, uh, Yvonne, I saw you look up. It was the, the, the person who came and said that they were scrolling through the TV and, came across the Amherst media and he, he ended up offering like all of this incredible feedback during the listening session. Um, so yeah, please. Alexis, just... you call it the, the carousel, don't you? Carousel. Okay. <laughs> um, so yeah, final push. If we can just get it out, this is a community wide event and everybody is encouraged to join. Um, so um, getting the word out this week is is fantastic. All right, so we're going to move on to the survey. And if you could give me just a moment, I'm going to pull up. So as I said, uh, Dr. Rhodes and I had the opportunity to review a draft survey. Um, we are ready to share about three quarters or maybe half of the survey with you today uh, for feedback. We had a meeting this afternoon with the Dunahue Institute and we determined that the uh, best date or the date that it looks like we'll be launching the survey is April 11th, Tuesday, April 11th. So that will give us um, just one more meeting since the 10th is a holiday, and that will be the meeting next Monday um, to finalize things. And then with the Jewish holidays that week, um, we determined that the 11th is the day for launching the survey. So are there any questions about that before I pull it up and we start reviewing? Okay. So Dr. Rhodes and I are looking, when we're reviewing this with the Dunahue, we're looking at sort of the back end raw side of things. Um, but what we did today was try to get it into um, a preview mode so that you can see it the way that it will look. Um, and then And then we'll go from there. So here we go. Yeah. Can you all see? Okay, great. So this is going to be a little bit tedious, but we'll, you know, it's worth it for us to go through and really make sure that we get it the way that we want it. Um, and you can see here that uh, this is the preamble. So this is sort of like the cover letter that's going to happen uh, that will be first uh, scene, and you can see what it looks like here um, also on a, on a mobile device. So we can just take a little time to read through this and we'll go one section at a time. Um, and I'll just try to scroll slowly here. All right. So I'm um, just opening it up for any questions or comments about this. And I will also say that um, we will be including our logo as well, as well as the town's logo and the Dunahue Institute's logo. So that will be at the top. Um, yes, Jennifer. Is there a way to switch in some areas you have residents? Can you use community members? I never used to. I try not to use the word resident. I don't know. 
but I use community member and I understand if you can't do it in the area where you're referencing the council's um, affirming to resolution, but some mm -hmm. in other places in the document, it references resident. Yeah, so like for example, we designed, oh. Can I ask the um the, yeah. the the reasoning behind that that choice that preference you make? I just think that I personally think that community member sounds uh, more friendly and and so when we revamped the the community activity forms they used to be citizens activities forms so we tried to shy away from the language of citizens and resident. Because I've gotten the point about um you know citizenship. Uh, citizens over, uh, but I've not. Um, but anyway, the 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 point with on residents, you know, some municipal rep, rep, reparative justice programs are targeting. Um, in fact, most recently in the language uh, in Northampton, they speak of residents and workers. So they're also so in their case, they also attempt to include in the reparative justice community, those who may not be residents of Northampton, but they work in, they're, they're of African descent and they work in Northampton. And I, I can understand, especially after going to a uh, city council meeting recently and hearing all of this, uh, uh, hearing on multiple occasions them talk about how there are no black people or very few black people who are residents of Northampton, I guess it, it makes sense for them to also look at the workforce, the uh, um, African-American or people of African descent who are part of the workforce of Northampton to be included. But in our case, I'm, I, I don't know how a, a lot of our language has centered around trying to really capture the resident community and, and not, um, uh, but I'm open to hearing an argument for using language like community members if we're also trying to engage the input of non-resident, uh, but but people who are part of the workforce of uh, or of, uh, uh, of of the town or students who don't consider themselves residents um, for voting purposes or whatever, but they but they are they do reside here most of the year, uh, but maybe they don't consider themselves. Um, Resident, so I, I I'm not averse to the point. I'm just trying to to think it out, um, think out loud about it a little bit. Thank you. Well, and then so this survey is going out to everyone, right? It's not limited to any particular community member, right? So where it might be different if we know for a fact that we are only going to to uh, provide reparations for Amherst for residents who are descendants of or for for black residents but this is going out to everybody in the community so it's a little bit more broad than just so will businesses business owners receive this yeah so that's a really good question though i do think that benefits reparation benefits um that eligibility that residency will be required um because it's a municipal plan um however i'm not sure that that means we don't want to capture the attitudes of all community members including um as you said business owners or the workforce um so that's a really a question for the assembly to decide. And I do think that changing the word um, does have an implication. So I just want to make sure that the assembly uh, understands that implication. Um, we don't want to give the impression that a non-resident would be eligible for reparations in Amherst um, because that wouldn't be the case. Um, yes, Alexis. I guess this is this has me thinking because I'm almost wondering if it makes it seem like to residents if folks who don't live here will have an equal say about how folks who live here will be receiving reparations 
um, when if we're saying identifying community attitudes, I don't know. It, it, being that we're you know we're talking about workers I don't know it, 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 I guess is it is it clear enough that if someone's not living in Amherst and they are contributing to this but they're not able to receive reparations because they don't live here are they having like an equal say over and I feel like maybe I'm complicating it more than it needs to be complicated but I guess what I, I'm wondering like what the the implication then becomes or like how is it being received um I guess is your question how we're weighting the responses from people depending on what their answers are like I, are they residents are they people of color so right. are we weighting the responses according to who the people are yeah Right. Yeah. I, I I think that if when you go that I think we ought to go back, go down through the rest of this. Okay. And then come back to that question. Great idea, Dr. Rhodes. Yeah, I think it might clarify things. I agree. Is everyone good with that? We'll come back to that. Let's sit with that and see how the rest of it looks. Okay. Great. All right. So if you were seeing this, you would have read that um, this will get a little bit more complicated. We want to point out um, for the the printed version, because um, in Qualtrics, um, depending on how you answer a question, you will be brought to something particular in the paper. We'll have to include like arrows and things like that. So let's say we One other point. Oh, yes, please. Dr. Spaz. Can we point questions the same way we've done with our Engage Amherst page back to a town website rather than an UMD, an UMD, the, the UMD staff? We can always take it to the UMD staff, you know, if we if if it's uh, germane or relevant. But I'm just not sure about listing the UMD um, employee as the person to direct questions or concerns. Yeah, that was a question that came up. And when people at the end are thanked for taking the survey, it actually points them to the Engage Amherst, the Town of Amherst, all of those. This was more te for technical. So maybe we need to be like, if you have technical questions about the survey, you would reach out to the Donahue Institute so that we're not fielding those. And we can be really clear with Carrie that anything that's outside of technical should be forwarded to us, obviously. Does that help, Dr. Shabazz? That's, that can be addressed that way if, we, if we're anticipating in that, but it is in the preamble. It's the first thing people see. And so I'm just wondering if um, um, how, how, much we really think there are technical questions for it to be right up there foregrounded as the first thing this is who you're who you're being directed to to bring concerns to yeah point well taken i think that's a really that 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 does make sense um let's see how it looks when we get or when we get through and we'll yeah we can come back to that all right so the first question here um, and so if you do not, I'm going to, we're going to go through it, um, first as yes, I live in Amherst full time. Okay. So we're going to click that and that's going to take us immediately to this question. Do you identify as black or of African heritage? One of the things that came up in our discussions um, is the use of these words black and African heritage interchangeably throughout and whether we needed to create to uh, add some language in the preamble that notifies the respondent that we will be using the words interchangeably um, or does the assembly want to make a decision to only use one to only go one way with this. So that's a question I have. How would we like to? Yes, Alexis. Um, I 
I have a problem with using them interchangeably. Um, you can be of African heritage, but not black. Um, so I, I do have a problem with them being used interchangeably, but I guess I, I think that there may be, it would be worth it maybe to say like why these two things are being grouped together specifically for our, for our purposes, mm -hmm. um, not being used interchangeably, um, because they're not the same. Like one is speaking to a race, which is like a political identity, um, which is specific and can change over time where like you either are of African heritage or you're not. Um, so yeah, I, I, have a, I have a big problem about it using interchangeably, but I think that people may also have a question as to like why being that these two things can be different, why they're being grouped together um, for our purposes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I think that's a great point. Um, if I may, my sense would be it's fine here uh, to follow the language. Perhaps it's fine here to follow the language of the uh, decennial census and just say Black. Um, slash African-American. That's what, the, that's how the census reads. I mean, yeah. <laughs> But does that then, are we then excluding African immigrants? We are then, right? And like, was, is that something that we're in, intending on identifying if, if you're specifically an African-American uh, of a specific like ethnic, uh, uh, African-American ethnicity, or I don't know. I, I guess my understanding was that we were using African heritage to include folks that are ethnically from the continent, potentially, you know, immigrants and whatnot. Mm. Interesting. Good I think maybe we, could, maybe we could watch a little further sure. see what happens, and particularly in terms of whether we're asking down the line about or question about lineage, because then we can cross-reference and kind of filter out from a lineage question those who might have answered uh, um, that they were, you know, of African heritage, or if we stay with that language, but may not be actually racially, um, <clears throat> may not racially identify as as black. I hear the point. I have a um, a long time had a colleague at at UMass who's uh, native born. Uh, in South Africa. And so you ask her if, she, if she's of African heritage, she's proudly will tell you she's yeah. of African heritage, but her family's all from England. She's white. She's as white as white as snow. And uh, the, uh, so racially, no, she's not, a, she's not black. She's not um, in that sense, um, an African, but ra she's not racially uh, black, let us say. So I, I, I see the conundrum and, um, but maybe it's settled down the line. Thank you, Dr. Shabazz Yvonne. So are we trying to identify folks that might be eligible for reparations? I thought we, this, I think I'm thinking yes, but not, that's not, I, I understood this as not being the primary reason for the survey. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. I think that, yeah, um, yeah right. So we're, we're, you know, so then is there a, a question about so everyone else who doesn't answer this question as black or of African heritage, we don't capture their heritage. There's not, a, there isn't another question that says, what's your heritage? No, exactly. Right. Yeah. This so, takes us to yeah. particular questions. Right. Um, yes. Right. And there okay. are questions that are set out for all community members. And then there are questions that are set out um, only for folks who answer yes to this. So if we're really focused on black folks of African heritage, correct? Then, mm -hmm. then I say, I mean, thinking of um, Dr. Shabazz's example just now, then we do want to clump black with African heritage so that whoever answers that question goes down a particular route with uh, the rest of the questions, correct? 
But I think the question of immigrants, right? Is that the one you raised, Alexis? That if well, that was using the term African American. African American. Okay. So if we say, do you identify as black or of African heritage? Then that question would be correct. That's who we're trying to get at with this question. What should it be? And yes, and. <laughs> And well, just you know, remember, that's what we ended up deciding for an earlier listening session or for the inclusion portal. It was black and of um, that we've been using. Sorry, I Dr. think that's very clear. Yeah, I do. Just to uh, on a point, um, what I think the function of these identification questions is not so much we're trying to develop the the listing or the database for who's who then is eligible or anything. It's just to be able to um, sort of peg different responses to content matters down uh, that that people answer based upon you know that we can cat we can categorize and say here were the responses of the people of African descent who answered or here were the. Uh, <clears throat> I think that's fundamentally, no, I got it. Yeah. I think that's fundamentally what I think we're trying to do. We're not trying to develop the list of who who's going to be going I, forward. Yeah, I, I, th I think if uh, what we need to do is go through this whole thing that we want to present, because some of these, some of these um, questions will be answered later, later on by the questions that come up. Uh, and so if we go through, you will see how uh, this all shakes out in the, in the, in the, in the follow-up questions that come. And then we can come back to this and say, all right, uh, we need to reword that. But um, I think we need to go through this because otherwise we're, gonna, we're not gonna see the entire picture. We're taking one piece of it at a time when there's really an entire picture we need to look at. All right. So yeah, let's keep going and we'll we'll hold a pin in that and we'll come back to it. But I think we've sort of come to a consensus that it's as black and of African heritage, but we can okay. Right. Okay. All right. So um and then here we have uh this question do you identify as descendant of people enslaved in the United States? Yes, Alexis. Would you be able to tell us when the questions have come specifically from, like, like does this only come up when you answer yes? Yeah, so if you, let's just go back here. So I'll, I haven't played around with this, like, because I've been so, so, so you see where we said no, that skipped that question altogether. So they don't even see it. Um, so if I'm, a, if I'm filling out this survey, I don't, I click to no, and I don't even know that question exists. Now for a paper survey, that's not gonna be the case. Everybody's gonna see everything. It's just gonna have to be more clear where people jump to. Does that make sense? All right, cool. So let me just go back here. Let me see actually what it does if you say prefer not to answer. That's okay, so it also skips. Okay, all right. So let's say we say yes here. Um, and then we have uh, this question here. Um, and this was, Irv, did you want to make any comments on this? Was this in terms of what the possible answers were? Was this one of the areas you wanted to comment on? Or is this no, I, this is, I'm not, when I look at this now, uh, the way when you answer yes, where, where, where this then jumps to, I think that it then, uh, um clarifies what uh what we were discussing before uh in terms of uh, african heritage this makes it clear uh now uh do you identify as descendant of people enslaved in the united states so yeah great and this um this allows us to be able to pull out, disaggregate the information um, as we want to. Um, so I'm gonna just go ahead and click yes here and then we'll keep going. All right, um, this, as you saw when we 
um, right now, because it might not be immediately clear, so I'm just going to say this each time, is right now everybody gets this question. So anybody who is taking the survey will be um, and will have this question before them. Okay, so I actually haven't seen what happens if you say no. I just want to. Okay, so um, let me go back here. I think there's something a little wonky about that. I'm going to make a note, but let's go to yes. Um, because so I think that or we talked about this next set um, being only for people who identify as black and of African heritage. So, um, but I think, yes. if, right, okay. Um, so this is sort of like general. Um, so let's say we say yes from time to time. Um, and then here you have where you can, there's no limit. You can put as many words in here as you would like um, to provide more details. Okay, and then here's where we start to get into these systems that we looked at at the retreat. Again, obviously this is only for people who identify as black and of African heritage. So it's the economic, the healthcare, public elementary and secondary educational system local political system, policing, courts and judicial system, the housing system. Um, and then we talked about the possibility of inviting the respondent to expand on any one of these through example that they may want to share. Like I had this experience with the police or I had this experience at a doctor's office. Um, and I think some of the conversation that we had is, uh, what would we be looking to get out of this? You know, so, and Dr. Rhodes, do you want to just talk a little bit about what your like thoughts were on that in terms of our report and yeah, this, this is all, all of this is really a, a, a critical data for us to have to put in our report because this is all Amherst specific. Uh, and uh, it uh, allows us then to compile this data uh, and, and in terms of our report. When I look at the local polit political system down there, e.g. town council and state government, I would take that state government out because we're only talking about our local government, because that's who, that's who's sponsoring us. That's who's giving us the money. That's who, that's who, that's where we live in this particular town, and that we have more say so over than in than state government. Uh, so, when I look at that local political system, I would take out state government. That that's what the way I feel about. It. Uh, yes, Alexis. Well, could potentially state government, doesn't that include our, our specific representatives? It, 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 does, it, it does, but um, these specific representatives uh, are representing not only Amherst, but they're representing a whole other groups of people out there other than Amherst. Amherst is not the major part of that, uh, their, their representation. And uh, people in Amherst want to know what Amherst people are thinking about this uh, and what they think about, you know, black people and African heritage people, what do they think about their local government? Uh, if we if we put in state government, then we don't know whether they're talking about Amherst or state government. Those are two different things. Well, so do you mind, what's the, what's the very top prompt? Sure. Um, just because like there's no for example there's no court that you go to in amherst like you do, when you're you either go to the northampton courthouse or you go to some other one and then like you also don't get jailed in amherst either so i don't i don't know if we can really exclude 
I don't know. Well, well you know, yeah, that's a good point. I mean, if you're talking about courts, you're, you're absolutely 100% correct uh, that the court system is a county system. It is not a Amherst system. We don't have any Amherst courts. Uh, and, uh, and, and so that's, that's actually a good, that's a good point. Uh, and I, you know, uh, Terry think, actually had suggested that we could remove that one. If that, yeah, I, yeah, that, that, yeah. Well, I, I, I think it's, it, it, I, I personally think that it's important, but I think that maybe to specify what, like if we're talking about Hampshire County, um, maybe in the in the local courts and judicial system, it, maybe if we're being specific about like within our jurisdiction or whatever, um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it's and and the thing is that I come back to is uh, if our charge is to look at what's happening in Amherst and we want to get specific feedback on that. Uh, in terms of the harms done as a resident of Amherst by Amherst, uh, then, um, you know, that question right there, uh, as far as I'm concerned, is, is um, not necessary. Jennifer, I see that your hand is raised. Oh, I can't hear, we can't hear you, Jennifer. I was just thinking like, um, so, you know, what is here is like WIC and uh, ServiceNet and all the mental health agencies. And uh, I don't know where those necessarily fit in on here. And then the, I, when I saw courts too, I was wondering, because the interesting thing is that you don't go to court and that decision isn't made here, but the influence and the whatever happened most likely was was done here right like whatever you're being accused of was that was done here so i don't know how you follow that thread i just but i was really com making come wanted to make comment on the fact that things like wicker here and um the other social service agencies service net bhn and where did those fit into that interesting yeah very, very, um, interesting um yeah, I mean, I, 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 I guess, yeah, that one I, I, is hard. I, I, I mean, because I'm, I'm looking at it, and I think, you know, that judicial system, it, it, it uh, I think we ought to take it out, and we might think of it in terms of entree points into it. In terms of what was that? You know, and, I mean, a person in Amherst uh, goes. To through the judicial system, if some local incident happens, mm -hmm. i.e., a police incident happens, then you're then you're in that court system uh, into the judicial system uh, in any number of different ways. It's how you get to the court, uh, court system is uh, uh, how you get to the judicial system is the question that we might want to think about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, and to Jennifer's point, do we want to add social services as a system? Okay, great point, Jennifer. So we'll, that's any, yeah. Yeah, so I good. don't know if it falls under like other, but I just thought I would. No, I think it's its own stand standalone system. Um, I think that's, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, okay, great. So let's go on here. Um, is there any preference for, would you like to see something at the end that says if you'd like to expand on your experience in any one of these systems, or would you like to see the possibility of expanding right under each individual system? Yes, Alexis. I, I, I think just to get it out there, I think that my preference is to have it under each one, but I guess I'm wondering, I, I think that I was expecting or or wanting that in the last one. And so is there a way, like before we get to this question, you're asked to sort of like broadly speak about it right? Um, in, in the open thing. So I don't know if, 
if like letting people know that like they're going to have an opportunity to speak to each of those different systems but like without having to like do things twice i know that the the folks at the donahue institute are going to help us with like arranging that anyways but i i don't know that that was my point too when we met with the donahue i i think we could actually just remove this one here and ask the general question and then because then we're bringing them into thinking more a little bit more specifically right so we could have one under each and then we could have something at the end that says if you'd like to expand on you know or provide any more details about your experience and then there's a bigger just moving this basically jennifer I'm wondering about at the end, if you have something or somewhere that says other, just because I can't imagine that everybody's, that all discrimination falls into these neat little mm -hmm. pockets. And then also like, I didn't see like local businesses, but I also you're, the, it's moving. So I can't keep up with what's going on and where it is. And so I don't know if things like businesses were there. No, we did not include business community, like, how would we even say that? So it's a housing system, a court system, a policing system, a political system, a social services system. Well, that could, it could fit under um, other, like, so if I feel like I was discriminated in a store, then I would put that in other and explain it wherever you gave me the opportunity to explain it. Because it could be that people just feel like they've been had acts of racism acted towards them from walking down the street and somebody has done something, right? Like, I just feel like we can't necessarily sum up everybody's experiences into these just neat categories. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, Dr. Rhodes, I see that you're talking. Yes, Is, I, there could be one okay. that uh, says community experience, I mean, which would get at, get at something with Jennifer is raising, which is important. That's something that we have we have hadn't considered. So I think Michelle, we need to take that back to Perry yep. and see how we can put that in there. Absolutely. And I think in other category is really good too, just to and actually this is a good transition. Um, something that we wanted to share with you is originally following this block of questions. We had a preamble about the five injury areas of slavery, and we had what we covered in our listening session. So peoplehood, education, all the ones that the five injury areas. And we felt that it was a little bit redundant um, with the exception of peoplehood. And so I would like to invite Dr. Shabazz in particular, but anybody um, to talk a little bit about peoplehood and where uh, Dr. Rhodes, I think, had some questions. It wasn't clear at all to the Dunahue Institute what peoplehood was referring to. Um, so we talked about, is that getting at some of what you're talking about, like walking down the street? You know, I, I guess I'm just asking. Um, yes, Alexis. Well, and is that's is that represented here in one of these categories? Because I think that, that, that goes into the like where yeah. where is our history even located? For example. Um, okay. So oh, no, no, that would be awesome. Thank oh. Okay. Um, Dr. Shabazz, I think I hear um, I Dr. D in the back. Yeah, I'll, I'm trying to really just say quickly and then sure, uh, yeah, get off in response to this that um, the, uh, the, the real question here, and I was waiting to just see if it comes up for later on, but um, where are we asking if uh, a respondent uh, knows that they are um, uh, or believes that they have an ancestor born in the United States who was enslaved. Um, that is is goes deeply toward the the question of you know the distinct ethnic experience, the distinct peoplehood that we're trying to um, 
that we're trying to to address the harms to peoplehood that we're trying to address this is something that an Af and a a jamaican or a cape verdean or um you know a nigerian this isn't relevant to them you see what i'm saying because they have a peoplehood they have a peoplehood that they belong to but the peoplehood we're talking about uh, relative to reparative justice, the reparations is the peoplehood of those who ancestors came yes. over in the Middle Passage, were enslaved in this country, and yeah. and have been robbed of their peoplehood, of their dignity as human beings. So this is a very important area of the survey we have to we have to get at. Thank you, uh, Emil uh, Car. Uh, you know I. I agree with you, and I think that uh, Michelle just brought up this uh, previous question that we have up there that says, do you identify as descendant of people enslaved in the United States? Now, that's that's we asked that question early on. Uh, now, so we, we've already asked that question. So the, then the question becomes, all right, when we talk about peoplehood, what do we specifically mean? In other words, Michelle and I are looking for a way to capture peoplehood, but I, for myself, absent a clear definitive definition of what that is, I don't know how to put this in as a question in terms of peoplehood. So I will, I will try to get some things uh, offline for you uh, as I, as I sit with that that question. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Dr. Chavez, if, if you could uh, give us some kind of definition of peoplehood that we can then run with, that would be good. Gotcha. Thank you, Dr. Shabazz. And I think you did actually do that for our listening session. So I can send you back what I have for that. That's what we originally gave to Carrie. And then that can be um, added to as well. But I, I guess I wonder, based on this conversation, is um, does it resonate for assembly members um, if you did answer yes to this question um, that you would be brought to a question about peoplehood um, in specifically um, and to be able to expand on that, if you wish. Outstanding. Um, what was that, Dr. Rhodes? I said outstanding. That, yeah. yeah. Uh, and that would yeah, to go from go from there to the whole thing about peoplehood, uh, which would include that which uh, Dr. Shabazz comes up with would be good, a good idea. Great, okay. So we'll, we'll Dr. Schmelz, we'll work together on that. And I, I would suggest we also tap into the uh, uh, Deborah Bridges for comments as well, because this goes towards some of, uh, I think the points she has made consistently about the way African people in, in Amherst have been erased. They've been erased from, from the history of this town they continue to be erased in so many ways. The the uh, uh, um, their their presence, their impact, their uh, their sense of belonging. Those are the things that you're talking about in terms of peoplehood. So yeah, it 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 can address the question of place names and roads and this type of thing. But it's but it's actually a little deeper than that. It's just how you've been erased from the historical experience uh, due to due to the systematic racism. Right, and and and, and Dr. Shabazz, everything you're saying is, is is resonates, and and all we would want to do is figure out how to capture that uh, through the confines of this survey. Gotcha. All right. So we've gotten through the systems. I have some good comments on that. Um, I'm just going to do a sneak peek ahead. I think. Okay. So this is where we're not ready to review yet um, with the group because we want to get in a bit of a better shape here. And actually, I think our conversation today is going to be really helpful. So we have uh, another meeting set up with the Dunahue Institute just to get the eligibility questions in better shape. Um, and so we'll be doing that. Um, let me just see something, though. I would like to 
Um, so skipping ahead quickly, uh, please get to repair. Um, so because we have actually, you know what, let me just see, let's, let's stop there. And we're going to get, we're going to get to the rest of these questions at the next time we meet. Um, there's a whole section on sustaining our work. Um, a bunch of questions about that that we want to review. And then we also have um, the demographics. We might be able to quickly review this. Um, we talked about this at the retreat, but so far we have, um, how long has your family lived in Amherst? How long have you lived in Amherst? Um, those are questions. And then the housing situation, um, whether you're a student, Yes, Alexis, please. I'm so sorry. I just have a question about how long has your family lived in? Is that like specific to if you answered um, that yes, you're black and of African heritage? That's a really good question. Um, thank you for asking that. Uh, one thing I just thought about is like, what if you're adopted by white people, for example? Right. Yep. And there are numbers. And there are, yeah, yeah. Let me, I'll, uh, I, I'm starring that in my notes. Um, I'm not sure the answer right now, but we'll get that. Um, okay. And then I just, I wanted to actually just bring your attention to one in particular. Um, these are ones that we, we have talked about. I'm scrolling through them quickly. This will not be the last time we look at these, but this is the one I really wanted to, we wanted to ask you about. Initially, there was an income question and we talked about income not being a good way to determine much of anything really, um, you know, in terms of what we're trying to assess. Um, so we talked about it more in the sense of like your experience. Um, and this is the question that came out of that conversation. And I wanted to see how this question sits with people and whether um, there is another way that might be better to frame this question. Yes, Jennifer. Um, I don't really know about how to reframe the question, but I do wonder how you came up with the last 12 months. Could I, someone read it, please? Oh, sure, sorry. sure. It says sometimes people find that their income does not quite cover their living expense costs. In the last 12 months, has this happened to you? And this 12 months to answer your question, Jennifer, I think Carrie pulled from, you know, when you go to the pediatrician's office and they ask you screener questions like this, mm -hmm. I think that's where she, she, she took that from. Mm. But if no, you have. No, no, we, that, yeah, that's interesting. I, I didn't, for whatever reason, I, I, I didn't see that one. Uh, well, but, and, and, yeah. and, and, and is it still, are we all, is that all going to be saying? You know, as a person living in Amherst, the, these does that, in other words, as a person living in Amherst, uh, et cetera, then it goes to all of those things. Yes. And that's, that, that has, I don't know. Go ahead. I, I don't, I don't really have any say in whether you keep the question or not, but I, I would just say I don't understand the time frame of a year um, because lots of people go through bumps in and out throughout their, I mean, I, I, to me, it seems like a, a, it would be best to say in the time that you've lived in Amherst or, or something similar to that. But that, again, is just me. I think yeah. that's great. Yeah. Uh, Sorry. Yeah, there, is, there is a, there is a specific reason for saying that. Um, uh, because it, it captures that last 12 months because and the reason for you that you want that that last 12 months versus during the time that you live live here uh, it gives us a snapshot of that person's experience over the last 12 months which we having that data would allow us to do a number of things with it on uh, uh, with that and to, and to report back on it because 
if people were saying, well, over the last 12 months, they had a, uh, had a lot of trouble covering their living costs in Amherst, that's, that's very powerful information versus over the last two or three years. Because we, it, it's, a, it's a time stamp that we're looking for. Well, I mean, I guess you could break the question into two, just because I, I I understand the 12 months, but I also feel like at the same time, like we're just coming out of pandemic where a lot of people have been affected and the cost of everything has gone up in the last year, two, two, yes. two yes. times. So it's a little bit, yes. yes, it's a little bit different, right? As, and so if you ask, like, have you ever had you know, time, if so, you know, has it been in the last 12 months or however you want to word it, then that might be able to work out both. Yeah, and, 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 and you know, for me, that having the last 12 months is important because of just what you said, the pandemic caused all kinds of economic dislocations uh, and harm. And it's important to capture that because then it will tie back into not only national data, but data uh, from the town and from the county, et cetera. I know, and I can kind of go back and forth with this for you a little bit. So I'm, this is the last thing I'm going to say, and then I'm going to leave it alone, because I actually think that we could just do both. But like when you think about it, the rents went up at the very beginning of the pandemic, like all of a sudden, like almost double, right? So they went from being roughly like, you know, twenty four hundred dollars for a three bedroom to thirty six hundred for a three bedroom in yes. twenty twenty, because of the way the parents. Well, I don't I want to blame the students necessarily, but there was such an influx of parents who felt like their kids didn't, you know, in their years in college, need to be home and sent them to live in our community, right? And so, I don't know. I I think if we just do both, that'll that makes the point. It, it, it's it, it's fine with me. It, it, it's just that I, I uh, capturing that information allows us to get this ta time stamp. And yes, everything you said is true. But the other thing that is true is that uh, there are costs that have gone up already still impact them in terms of answering this question. All right. And I see Alexis's hand. I, I agree with Jennifer. And I'm wondering if instead of having a yes, no, don't know if those options could be how long? Because what if somebody, what if in the last question they said, well, my family's been living here 50 years and I've never been able to quite cover my living costs mm -hmm. um, or I've like really, really struggled. Um, it, I, I don't know if that's as valuable potentially as knowing that it's been rough in the last 12 months. And like, what, what if you just so happen to get a decent job within the last 12 months, but you've been here for however long and the entire rest of your life was, you know, really hard living here. Um, so I, I agree with Jennifer and I'm wondering if we can get all that information by instead saying like, how long has this been true for you? If, if it was true, like if it was in the last 12 months within the last, you know, da, 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 if it's times rather than yes, no. Yeah, well, yeah I, I, again, I agree with that. And uh, I agree with putting both of them, but it is important that we kept and get, put a timestamp on this because it allows us to capture that, that, that sense of, hey, uh, in the last 12 months, the last 12 months are obviously going to be impacted by the previous 12 months and whatever would happen to a person. Uh, and that it carries through, it's a wave. Uh, if you had a hard time, uh, 24 months ago because of increases in rents. That carries through to today also because it hasn't changed for you. You're still struggling to pay, to meet, to meet rent or and other costs. You're still and within that 12 months. It doesn't go away. The, the wave that started two years ago is still cresting now. But you could potentially have a good job and then lose it for whatever reason. And you might have said in here that it was due to discrimination or whatever. And then at that point you were able to, I don't know. I I think there's a good solution. I think we can ask, sometimes people find that their income does not quite cover their living costs. Have you experienced that in Amherst? If you have, if you say yes, 
then you go to a place that time stamps it or sh shows like I've experienced that for my whole life. Um, I, I sometimes experience that I've experienced that in the last 12 months or whatever, and then even have a place where people can just yeah. fill in. Yeah, I agree with that. The other thing is just, we, again, we want to make this specific to African-Americans or descendants of African-Americans. We want that information. Yes. Um, that's true. Um, okay. So I think I'm going to stop sharing. We've gotten really good feedback. We still have to call another period of public comment before we can um, adjourn here. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead now and call our second period of public comment. And um, I, I'm not going to read the statement again, but essentially, if you'd like to make public comment, please go ahead and raise your hand and we'll bring you into the room and you uh, will have up to three minutes. And we don't um, necessarily engage, but we'll be listening very carefully. And Jennifer, do you want me to move uh, Kiara in? Or are you on that? Ooh, there we go. Thank you. Um, good afternoon. Um, I just wanted to say um, about this um, UMass ACE Summit that's happening on Saturday. If, if any member of the HRA would like to um, speak on the, the survey and maybe just let, let people know how they can access it or um, learn more information or updates about when it's going to be released and how they can access it from there, um, that opportunity is definitely available. So I just wanted to put that out there. Thank you. Thank you so much. That is an excellent uh, opportunity for us. And um, I hope that members that, uh, Kiara, I don't mean to put you on the spot, but are you able to join us on Thursday? Do you know? There will be students there. We're, we've okay. been promoting it to students. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. That's so great. Okay. Um, so yeah, is there, are there um, any assembly members that was already that were already planning on being um, there on Saturday? We can. It, I think that's just a, an excellent um, opportunity, and I'll provide all of that information to any assembly member who might want to go and speak to the survey in terms of our release date and everything like that. Thank you. Thank you, Kiara. All right. Are there any other um, folks who would like to make public comment? Okay. So um, there were a couple other items on our agenda today, but it's gotten late. One of them is um, scheduling our listening sessions with Amherst College, Hampshire College, and UMass. Um, so I am in the process of developing some dates to propose to you all for those. Um, so I'll bring those back. I also added something something to the agenda um, final report. I wanted to share with the group um, some thoughts that I have about uh, getting going on our final report and who um, I've identified in the community that might be able to help us with our final report as well. So I'll put that on the agenda for next week so we can talk more about that. Um, any questions or assembly um, member comments? And Kiara, is your, your hand is still raised. Did you wanna make additional comment? Oh no, I can lower it, I didn't know what it was. Okay, <laughs> okay. Um, any other questions? All right, so just to quickly wrap up, I'm gonna send the itinerary for Thursday to everybody. Uh, Alexis and I will be at noon at the powerhouse for anyone who would like to join and uh, 3.30 at Hazel's Kitchen. If that time changes, I will let you all know. Um, and that's just for the assembly to meet with Robin. So thank you everyone, great meeting and we'll see you on Thursday. <laughs> Bye. Adjourning at 326. Did you get that, Jennifer? Yes, I did. 326. Okay. okay. <laughs> Bye. Bye.